For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy, to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. We're at the Victorian Mansion in Gardner, Massachusetts, just like our live studio show. As you see, I already messed up. It's live straight through, no cuts, no editing. We're gonna go for this. It's a cold fall night. It's beautiful here. We're gonna knock on the door, see if they'll let us in to investigate this haunted mansion. Come on, the oddball crew is here. Come with us. I hope they're home, but this is gonna be lame. <laughs> really awkward. Hey! Thank you, thank you. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> the neighbors know, the neighbors know. I bid you welcome. This is Edwin and Lily. Hi. Hi. Welcome. This is their home. Thank you guys for having us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> All right. Oddball team is going to be investigating tonight, so you guys know where to go, right? Yeah. We'll see you in a few minutes. And we're going to be checking in with them. They'll be investigating, and they'll be special guests, too. <laughs> this is so exciting. All right. See you soon. All right, guys. Could we host oh, it down? Yeah. yeah, I can get it. All right. Isn't this fun? It is. It is. All right. Well, thank you guys for having us. Tell us, when did you first move in here? Well, we moved in uh, spring of 2009, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, from the very next day after we had um, bought the house, we started moving in boxes and we experienced things right away, things moving right in front of us. Like what? I mean... Well, we had like a plant holder, two heavy plant holders, and we were just sitting, you know, just having some pizza and just talking and all of a sudden we can, well, the, the people who are behind it can actually hear it move. Right. And um, I actually saw it. It actually moved about six inches. It actually skipped, which was weird. And they both did. So I thought that was strange. I was like, hmm, that's unusual. At first, mm, whatever. Yeah. And then after that, we started experiencing stuff in the ladies' parlor. So back, you know, back in the day when the ladies used to hang out there, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. We have... We had, it was early, it was right before um, yeah. Christmas. We had, we we'll, just, set we just up. we'll get to the rooms okay. for sure. You know, we definitely want a tour, but did you, had you had ghost experiences before? No. What about you, Edwin? No, I didn't believe in it. I thought it was silly. I thought it was, it was the dumbest thing, but. Had you heard it was haunted when you bought the place? Uh, no, it wasn't until after we placed the bid that we started hearing rumors. We heard it was on taps. Right. Um, they did books on it um, and things like that. And also a documentary um, was filmed here. Right. It featured, the house was featured here. And you didn't know that before you bought it? No. I had no idea. And, and because we're originally from Boston, yeah. um, we didn't know nothing about the area. I guess everybody here knows it as the Haunted Victoria. Interesting. So this is Gardner, Mass. Chair City. Yeah, uh, the the big world's largest chair, former world's largest chair, is uh, mm -hmm. on display in town. Yes, it is. and uh, and who built this mansion and when? Oh, S. K. Pierce. Um, he became uh, he made two point five million dollars back in the eighteen eighties. A lot of money. He, oh yeah, and, and actually he bought the the factory across the street, and in a short time he he built his house in eighteen sixty five. How many rooms? Twenty six rooms. Twenty six. Huge, yeah. huge, huge place. Saw from the outside, it's gorgeous. And uh, now we're going to get to see it from the inside. So, uh, oh, we, you guys. oh, there's a lot of famous people that, that came. Let's go around and look at them. Yeah, Let's absolutely. Let's do that. Well, I mean, we'll start with P.T. Barnum. Yeah. Um, actually, there was a, uh, the, the circus train used to stop right up the street. Okay. And uh, P.T. Barnum became good friends with um, S.K. Pierce, and he used to play billiards up on the third floor. Oh, we're going to get up there. Yeah. So, um, and also Calvin Coolidge um, nice. in the early 1900s. Yep. And, he actually became good friends as well. And there's been a lot of famous people, Norman Rockwell, um, right. and that's S.K. Pierce right there. And um, so he's the master of the house right here. Yeah. Do you think he's still here? 
Um, well, a lot of psychics pick, pick him, you know, they, they said that he's a very firm man and he's always banging on things, which we get that from right. time to time. We get bangings on like our headboard and a lot of knockings <laughs> and doors. It's slamming. a family show, Ed. <laughs> also, <laughs> no, no, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, all right, cool. So now, so now you're, you're kind of opening this place up to paranormal investigators, right? Yeah, we've had a few and they already got tons of stuff, especially EVPs. They get a lot of those. Right. And I know you've got events here through uh, Silent Voices Paranormal and mm -hmm. we'll have their website, sign, uh, silentvoicesparanormal.com, I think, doing some events with you guys. Really cool. I can't wait to see this place. Can you take us around and, and show oh. us here on the first floor? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We'll go down this way. Wait, look at, look at the books. Oh, this yeah. Haunted Massachusetts. <laughs> Who's playing with it? All right. <laughs> oh. Well, Sarah, actually, before we get the tour, I think we did get some reader emails. I think we did, actually. Funny you should say that. So it says, hey guys, love the show. I was just wondering if it's true that you guys go out and investigate things together in a replica mystery machine and dress up like the gang. Just curious. Regards, Steve in Phoenix. I was wondering how long it would be till that rumor came to light. Yes, we do. No, you'll never see it on TV. Hey. It's yeah. a secret. It is a secret. Thanks for writing us. You can write us anytime. Info at 30oddminutes.com. Visit our website. Find us on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. And you can download episodes for free on iTunes. And you can find them on demand on our website. We appreciate you writing to us. Thanks. Thanks so much. Okay, Edwin, take us around. Tell us. Oh, First my floor. goodness. Um, in this Where to start? room right here, uh, mm -hmm. we have two little doggies. And they're actually petrified to be right around this area. Okay. Um, we've actually thrown treats and balls. And they're, I mean, they're free to roam wherever they want. But they usually end up down that direction. They don't like this area. I don't know what they pick up on. I have no clue. Right. We've actually had the piano play three notes. There's something about threes. I don't know what that means. But we get knocks of threes. We get doorbells ringing three times. This piano? Yeah, this piano played three times and it was funny because Lily was looking down from the staircase and when she looked, right when she turned around, it played one more note. Huh. So that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> they hate this. They hate that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Little Ghostbusters right? Oh, I can turn right. you down over here. This is an interesting room over here. Yep. Um, actually, last August, um, actually, um, the neighbor um, he called me and said, Eddie, Eddie, come here. I gotta, um, I want to talk to you for a second. I was like, man, I didn't know you guys had kids. And I'm like, uh, Mike, uh, we, we, don't, we don't have any kids. And he goes, oh, no, no, the, but I see a kid. He's running back and forth. Um, so he's playing a game. And I was like, that's when Lillian ran up to him and said, um, what did you say? And, and he said, um, yeah, there's a, there's a kid running back and forth. But he's not the only one. There's another neighbor who actually saw, we had purchased the house, but we didn't move in until the spring. Right. And he says up on the third floor, there's someone working or doing something, and he sees them all the time. And, and I said, well, we, had, we didn't move in yet. Wow. So, yeah, and it's, you know, things like that in here. Also, we've had... I'm sitting here and you know just watching TV and all of a sudden the footsteps they're constantly they're all of a sudden and there's actually a new one that just happened last week which was really bizarre is I'm sitting here and all of a sudden I can hear the wind up of a cuckoo clock huh. but we don't own a cuckoo clock no so, worries no and it happened and then when Lillian actually heard it and she's like okay he's not he's not losing his mind so that you know that that actually and over here I can quickly show you this is the Butler's yeah. pantry this is gorgeous what a great house so was this always a private residence. Um, yeah, it was actually vacant for about 25 years, but um, the previous owner, I actually had to, um, I had to actually talk to him because all the different experiences, I had to validate all the things that he was going through. So, oh, did you get that? The door just pushed open a little bit. Oh, well, we get stuck. Oh, did okay. you see that? <laughs> that was right. Well, you know what's the weird thing is they did an investigation, and there was actually, um, we got the sound of things being thrown, which actually we will some, sometimes be watching TV and we can hear the sounds of cups being thrown. I don't know what that is, but it's happened on three different occasions. Huh. Yeah, and that's the, the dumb waiter there. Yep. That's pretty oh, yeah, cool. Sure. And Great old house. let me show you some other things down this way. Um, oh, well, that's, that's uh, well, the kitchen. actually, we have the dogs cordoned off in the kitchen. Do you want me to show you the two? Oh, this section? Yeah, please. Let's see. Oh, actually, yeah. Let me show you this. This is some of the evidence. I'm not sure if you can see this. They're feeding us. <laughs> um, actually, this is some of the evidence. This is the two little um, children that was captured in a mirror, actually in the room, the ladies' parlor. Um, yeah, and you can see the little boy has like a blonde hair, Dutch boy hairstyle. But he, we hear him a lot. Huh. Um, our master bedroom, he runs back and forth, I'm assuming both of them, and they run back and forth, and, and I actually get really, you know, uh, apprehensive because Lillian, she falls asleep. She's, she's a tough cookie, but for me, um, right. 
Yeah, I get um, a little spooked. Yeah, but actually that particular night when we heard the footsteps and Lillian fell asleep and I can he actually hear it all around me. It was coming within the fireplace in front of the bed and that was kind of crazy. And then actually Maddie is another, she's an active spirit, probably the most active one. She actually uh, fell in love with S.K. Pierce, but she was like 20 years old and she's the one that, she does, she's always here. She's always doing something. Um, the kids usually do pranks. Um, they move things around, they shut things off. Um, it's actually kind of crazy, I mean. Yeah, and, and so you've been here for what, about a year and a half now, living here? So a year and a half, and we've gotten so many, we've got like 50 different incidents of things we can't explain, things we saw. I actually saw uh, an apparition in my, which used to be the nursery. Well, we'll get there. Let's yeah, see. I can okay, definitely let's, show that. Let's head upstairs, please. Yeah, absolutely. You can come this way. You're going to film my butt, aren't you? This always happens with these kinds of shows. Yeah, so Tom is author of Haunted Massachusetts as well as seven other books. Um, his wife is, of course, um, also the photographer of these books, and then together they make like quite the team. And they've been here, this is about, this is your fourth time, you said? Yeah. Um, and caught what, in her words, was one of the best uh, EVPs of their lives, completely by accident. And the story of that is actually quite fascinating. So I was going to turn the time over to them to actually show you the evidence that they've captured in this very place. It's pretty cool. Up here, this is where we actually captured this Porteo EVP. Uh, Porteo is Portuguese for you, and there was a Portuguese immigrant who lived here when it was a boarding house, and he used to drink moonshine and smoke, and one night he did both at the same time and spontaneously combusted. But before he used to take a drink, he would say, Porteo. Did you hear Did that? You <laughs> This is a, a video we captured here of the camera. Catch this. I'll go to full screen here. You'll see the camera move here and the door move. No one's in that room. The door swings open a little and the camera gets pushed backwards, but yet nobody was in the room. There was a thump before that happened, which is very interesting because, and I want to show you why, this is the camera that gets moved. Knock something over and in. Now, as you can see, we were all in the other we room. We were all in this room. Yeah, we were all in what we call the red room because of the decor. So, we captured uh, several EVPs and two really good videos, and uh, of course, that just proves again that this place is very, very haunted. Yeah, yeah. And so you're looking forward to doing it again tonight and see what you capture tonight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. As many awesome. times as we can. Wait. Cool. All right, so back to Jeff in the Red Room. All right, thank you, Tom and Arlene and Sarah. Isn't this place cool? Special guests, we run into all kinds of people in here in your private home, so cool. <laughs> thanks for inviting us in. Tell us about this room, room number five. Um, well, in this particular room, we've had um, a couple of different things happen. Um, actually, an uh, investigator was sitting on the bed and also in the master bedroom when all of a sudden, uh, shadows started peeking out toward the lamp. Right. They weren't the first investigator, they were actually about the third one. We've only had like four uh, teams come in here in the past month and a half, and they've all witnessed the same thing. It has something to do, I have a little, uh, I play classical music right on the corner, and apparently they're either attracted to it or something. Right. But um, the other thing we got here was an EVP of a woman moaning. It used to be a, a brothel back in the turn of the century, so that's pretty cool. So this was a brothel too? Yeah, and then early 1900 then became a boarding house, and then it was vacant for like 25 years. Right. And actually the, the man who um, perished in a fire, which is our master bedroom, which I can take you. Yeah. To, yeah, that's where let's we get, get a lot of. Let's go. Yeah. Got 
Got it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, this is our master bedroom, and um, we're the first ones who have made this into our master in, in such a long time that because the house is vacant, it's probably been since the 70s or 60s. And this is where we get a lot of stuff. Actually, just last night, the dogs are constantly flipping out, and they picked up on something in the hallway. And, you know, and they're constantly doing that. That bedroom door slammed on us on three occasions, full right. force. That actually leaked up. And While I, you're sleeping. Yeah, it was frightening. And voices, we constantly hear voices. I've heard it on a few occasions, a woman's voice. It sounded like, almost like a chant type thing. Yeah. And um, I, I can't make out what she's saying. Um, and the weird thing is that Lillian actually, uh, the same thing happened to her one morning. And she got up. It wasn't her normal routine. She went in. She took a quick shower. It was freezing in here. She took a shower. She got all dressed. I thought she was going out, but she didn't. Uh, she ended up going in the basement. She's in the basement. Four hours later, I check on her. I'm like, what is she doing? And I found her digging in the, in the basement. And it's a dirt floor basement. Yeah, and she just keeps digging. And then the next thing you know, she calls me over. She goes, I found something. And, I, and she found a pelvic bone. Oh, my gosh. So then, you know, that kind of was freaky. We did some research. We tried to figure out what it was. And we had it sent, sent off to have it analyzed by the police department. But that was bizarre. And also, the other incident that happened here, was, which kind of freaked me out looking back on it, the same thing. It was early one morning. And we're just sleeping here. And Lillian... Um, heard the doorbell ring twice yeah. um, and then she nudges me and she says wake up someone's here and then I was just you know um, I heard it I heard it for the third time I got up was gonna put on my sandals and I'm like oh geez it's absolutely brutally cold when all of a sudden right on the door this door was closed yep and this you know and all of a sudden you heard I mean, that loud yeah and I completely we looked at each other and actually I thought that it, the only other person who had the key was, was her brother. So I said, he has to be here, but why would he be here so early? It didn't make any sense. Lillian thought someone had broken in. When I opened up that door, and I looked, there was no one here. I ran down the, the, the stairs to see who had rang the doorbell. There was no one there. Oh my gosh. Now yeah. what's, what's it like living in a haunted house, for those who don't know? I mean, anyone, an analogy I've used in the past is, if you've ever been burglarized, you know the violating feeling where someone's been in your space that didn't belong there. It can take weeks, months, even years before you feel totally comfortable where you live. Your home, whatever it is, apartment, trailer, house should be your castle where you feel safe and secure. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this is like a burglar, but you can't call the police. You, right. you can't make them leave. Do you get nervous? Do you feel edgy? Oh, I mean, well, especially me. I, I'm especially in the beginning because I I'm, this is all new to me. So yeah. for me to go through all this, and usually what I do is like, especially when Lillian's out, I leave the lights on. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it, it's just really you know I get really nervous and kind of stressed out. And the dogs, for some reason, they they especially the little ones, they're always bothering her, and she's always next to me, right. and they're always picking up on different things as well. So yeah, it, it's definitely um, frightening. But I've gotten used to it. The noises are, you know, we constantly hear noises. We hear uh, knockings. Actually, the bedroom, our headboard knocked just three days ago. Right. Something was knocking. That was because there was. A, I invited a psychic in. Uh huh. And I, you know, and I don't know. They don't like psychics. Um, I remember um, when well, we're safe because yeah. I'm not. <laughs> well, actually, the screen. I had. Uh, there was one um, particular morning where uh, they had arrived a little early. Yeah. And they called me. Goes, oh, you're all set. We're gonna bring in the psychic. And then, you know, it was like, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give you a call in a couple of minutes. And the next thing, I called you. Oh, you guys are all set. You can come on in. And the screen on our closet door just went flying and it slammed against the wall. Oh my and, gosh. and actually, um, Andrew actually heard that. He said, what was that? And he goes, well, that's just the screen just slamming against. Did you hear it? Andrew? It was pretty wild. I could hear it over my. Just phone not. Just not. <laughs> Andrew's here too, he's just over there. Um, I can show you a couple other rooms yeah, also where I actually saw the spirit, which frightened the hell out of me. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, this particular room is the nanny's room. Yep. And my office, which is the nursery, I constantly hear noises coming from this room. Um, I don't know what's going on, but a lot of steps, um, creaks, and then if you, if you go through this way, I'll show you my office where, you know, this. 6.30 at night, I'm wrapping up work from home. I just want to hurry up and spend a little time with Lillian when all of a sudden, I'm just sitting here, and all of a sudden, this man's face appeared right in front of me. Um, he had these big, dark brown eyes, and he just glared at me. He stared at me. And the minute I saw him, I hit the ground. Uh, just right there? Just yeah, right it just, I fell right oh down, and I, and I hit the ground, and I was like, what the... Yeah, yeah, that? And I was like, oh my goodness. So then I actually, I, I went and I told Lillian what I had saw and, and we were trying to, you know, figure it out. I had to call the previous owner. I had yet to meet him and I said, 
um, you know, Mark, what is this? Have you ever seen this man? Um, yeah. And I described, you know, he's probably in his 50s and, and he looked rough looking, like someone who works outdoors. And he's like, well, I haven't come across him. I've seen a little boy, um, which is the one who does a lot of pranks, especially, you know, he always moving things. Yeah. He hides tools. He does a lot of different things to us. But, but who do you think this man is or was? Well, um, when I asked him, he said that he's almost sure the person I saw was the guy who perished in a fire who burnt it that spontaneously combusted in our master in bedroom. In your bedroom, yeah. Yeah. How does that go into bed each night, you know, laying down, uh, a long day, oh yeah, some guy burned up right here. Yeah, that was crazy. It happened back in April of 1963. and the not that long ago, kind of, historically speaking. Right, and actually last night when someone had come, they had come in over to do an investigation when all of a sudden we heard we were, he was an alcoholic. And um, we had a little drink of whiskey, and we asked him, would you, you want a shot of, of whiskey? And we actually got a loud yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was crazy. It, got, it gave me chills throughout my body. But we, with, with stuff like that, it's constantly going on in here. I've gotten used to it. So, to so me. Tell me, did you, did you grow up uh, religious in any kind of belief system? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Uh, no, not at all. Just a Catholic religion. But Yeah. yeah but Has this changed your perspective at all, living here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely know there's, um, you know, once people pass away, they they're definitely there's something out there. Um, okay. Um, you know, some other weird things that, um, actually my name is written up on a sister room, so it makes me think about uh, reincarnation as well. Yeah. Um, I thought that was weird, you know, we're snapping pictures and all of a sudden up on the, the sister, and there's a little pulley, and it says Edwin on it. That, that kind of freaked me off. It said Lillian, and I would have been headed <laughs> out the door. Let's head up there. Let's go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Got a whole other floor. This yeah. this house is huge. This way, so yeah, yeah, you can come this way. Yep. Yeah. Watch your step. It's all right. Everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. This place is huge. I'm going up backwards. You still have a gun. Now there's an interesting story about this. Um. <laughs> Actually, I had it propped up there for the kids because the kids get a kick out of it. They take pictures and stuff like that. Right. So then one morning, it was pouring rain in one of the rooms we have a leak, and the mass, <laughs> all right. the, the mass was facing. I had been propped up there for about 10 days. Right. Then all of a sudden, when Lily was up here and she's mopping up the floor, she looked and she heard like a little shuffling of some kind, and this is what, it went like that, and it looked directly at her. Nice. What did you learn? <laughs> <laughs> So servants would have lived up here? Yeah, they, um, actually SK Pierce had 23 servants, right. and one of the most active one, his name is Maddie, Maddie Cornwall, and they've seen her apparition, um, many different people have seen shadows go by here. Um, yeah, but I usually don't come up here that often, I get the heebie-jeebies. Do you have them now? Uh, do I have what? The heebie yeah, actually a little bit. This room in particular is what probably frightens me the most. Now let's go in. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, <laughs> Like to do a quick interview? <laughs> Are you ever scared here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. This is a, so you said uh, twenty-three servants would sleep in here. Yeah, actually, this wall was not here originally, and it would go all the way across. And they had bunk beds and all that. And well, this is not that big of a space for twenty-three people. Yeah, they well, the, that's they. Yeah, they were all well. This wall again was was not here. So okay. All the the bunk beds were set up here. This is where the cistern would fill, and this is oh, where right. my name is. Uh, is actually yeah, right up there. It says Edwin. You see it right there? It says Edwin upside down on the the bottom of the pulley, right there, Edwin. Oh yeah, E D W I N. Edwin, upside down. Yeah, right where the middle of the beam is. Yeah, so that that's kind of interesting. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, and other things they've gotten, they've gotten growls. Oh, we actually had a direct response from the spirit, which was pretty cool. Um, we had you some, just heard it with your regular ears. Well, actually, no. Lillian, actually, what what happened? It was a bunch of kids that were trying to break into the house, oh, um, nice. and the neighbor said, "Oh, you know, we saw these kids, blah blah blah." blah. So we had just moved in. We didn't have any tools or nothing. So then, um, actually, I had to work. So Lillian w wanted something so they won't be able to lift the window anymore because they had just to prop it until we get the right tools. Yeah. So Lillian got frustrated. She couldn't find anything. She couldn't find any, uh, uh, you know, a proper wood or something just to prop on the window. So she came up here, and she just jokingly said, um, "SK Pierce, I'm trying to fix your window. Can you help me out?" Yeah. And all of a sudden, a piece of wood just fell down. And she was like, you got to be kidding. And she picked up the piece of wood. She went down into the basement and she put up perfect fit. Oh gosh. So that's, I thought that, that was pretty cool. He's so helping. <laughs> I know. That's so cool. Actually, let's take a break here and check in with our ghost investigators. Uh, I, try this there they are. <laughs> Come on in. 
here. Matt, what's going on? Not much. Uh, just going around room to room doing very CVB sessions, taking uh, some still photos. I've got my little uh, palm quarter set up over there just to record the uh, room area. <laughs> got uh, Rob over here running the always. And Miss Sarah looking beautiful as always. <laughs> um, a lot of uh, echoes in this place, so EVPs could probably be a little interesting. And uh, we've been getting a lot of interesting little uh, tidbits out of the obelisk. Yes, we have. It would be very interesting to find out if somebody died either falling down the stairs or out a window at this place because some of the things that keep coming up are names, um, Peter's coming up over and over, stairs, just said stairs again, um, fall, high, um, parade keeps coming up, midgets, oddly enough, keep coming up, midgets on parade was actually uh, muttered, yep. ghost and fell through has come up quite a bit as well. So it would be really interesting to find out if somebody died either falling down the stairs, falling through a floor, or out a window. And it would be really freaky if there was a parade and there was a kid looking out the window and fell to his death. So we'll have to ask the owners that when we get a chance. Yay. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, keep up. We're going to check back in. The good news is even after the credits roll, we're going to keep investigating and uh, we can always check in on a future episode and let you know if we find anything because we only get 30 minutes. It's not quite enough to do a very thorough investigation. So very good. Edwin, what's this room? Uh, this is the, the famous billiard room. This is where all the, the famous used to hang out and Calvin Coolidge and P.T. Barnum. Wow. And actually, Minnesota Facts, the, the famous pool players, used to come yeah. out. Yeah. And there used to be a pool table and we found some recent some documents it auctioned off at almost three hundred thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so uh, all right here. This is the man cave. Uh, yeah, and oh, I love this room. It's actually my favorite room in the whole house. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, there's some interesting with psychics. They picked up on a lot of energy. Someone looking out the window over here, and, and this area right here as well, in particular, a negative right. energy. And I actually experienced one thing in here where. I was just standing here one day, and then all of a sudden I felt this chill that just came all the way across me, and then Lily was actually in our office, and I'm just, so she's just sitting there, and all of a sudden she said, when I walked toward her, it felt like a, re a refrigerator had opened. Uh -huh. Her legs got cold, and it was a hot, muggy day, but I definitely felt something in here, and the psychic had picked up on a negative energy here. Right. So, um, yeah, so, that, I don't know, I still get a little bit nervous up here, so. Very interesting. All right, we're going to try to run down to the basement real quick. Yeah. This is going to have to be a bit of a race. Okay, so we are running uh, three minutes to go. <laughs> you alright? I'm alright, Jeff. I'm all right. This is a huge house. Very cool. Very cool decor. And a dirt floor basement. I'm just showing the, what they captured, the apparition they captured in this area. Should have brought a shovel. Oh, let me stop turning on the lights. You have to be careful. All right, careful. Lights. Let me grab the light. Well done, Andrew. He's behind the camera. He's got to run through this. Well, this is the room where Lillian was digging for about five hours. She found the bones in here, and she found some other... In here? Yeah, she started digging and digging with all the slip coming up and everything, yeah, yeah. And, and she did. She came up. She came up with the pelvic bone, and, and so that was kind of crazy. Um, never other went, things. Never dug deeper for other bones. No, that was basically it. She just found that bone, but there was other little pieces of bone and some other interesting, like art of I don't know, things that were dated back in the yeah. early 1900s. That was kind of crazy. We actually had bought a box of tools um, yeah. that had gotten in the flea market, and I started placing them up over here. This didn't look like this. Yeah. All of a sudden, the, I came down the stairs, and things started flying off. Wow. Um, I found the tools, the same tools that I had placed on it were on the ground. And so every room, every floor has got some activity. Oh, just about, yeah, just about, and especially wow. in the basement. The basement is crazy. One of the investigators freaked out over here. Um, we got to keep moving here. Sorry, we're running close. Yeah, um, right over here. She was, right. just, she was just standing right here, and another one was standing there, and all of a sudden when she walked, she, she actually heard footsteps going right through the room. Oh my God. And it was, it sounded like a woman just with sandals, just doing her normal, you know, work. Right. Uh, yeah. So that was kind of crazy. And you can definitely, I heard you know, there's a turret here. Can we run up to it? 
In 45 seconds? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Come on. Come on. We got it. Until next time. Stay on.